When a clueless man gets abducted by an infamous serial killer, he is forced to play along with the theatrical enactment of his capture to have a chance at salvation. In a dark basement, Allison is tied to a chair with a Gemini zodiac sign carved on her head. Pleading for her life, she screams as an executioner wearing a Gemini shirt prepares a blowtorch to deliver her death. Some time later, a rich musician, Craig Owen, plays the grand piano in the middle of the night when his wife Kelly asks him to buy champagne. After kissing her goodbye, Craig drives to the liquor store in his sports car while a van with a clown poster parks beside him. When Craig grabs a bottle of champagne and pays for it at the counter, he sees a newspaper headline about the infamous Gemini killer's sixth victim. As he briefly takes a smoke outside, Kelly's best friend Bianca sends him a flirtatious picture. Picture, asking about their affair tomorrow. Wary of being caught, Craig claims he can't make it and deletes her text immediately. As Craig is about to enter his car, the van owner tases him unconscious before pulling him inside, making him drop the bottle of champagne on the ground. Moments later, Craig wakes up tied on an armchair when his strange abductor emerges from the corner prancing. He introduces himself as Bailey the Clown and addresses his victim as Billy. The deranged man then plays carnival music and puts a show in front of Craig playfully. When Craig refuses to partake in the clown's tricks, Bailey frowns. Disapprovingly, he notices the musician has been smoking, so he hits him. As the clown lashes out, the bewildered musician asks if Bailey is a deranged fan of his, confirming that he doesn't recognize him at all. However, Bailey asserts that everybody knows him and pokes Craig's nose. Frustrated, Craig curses at his abductor, so Bailey hits him again. Just as they're about to resume the clown's act, the musician's cell phone rings. As Bailey reads Kelly's name and address, Craig seeds in anger and threatens his abductor to stay away from his wife. Hearing him curse, the clown strikes him again and warns him. Despite his pain, Craig insists he's not Billy, but the deranged man ignores it. When Craig demands a reason for his abduction, Bailey reveals he's a lost soul regardless of his smiling facade. Reminded by the time, Bailey concludes his act and leaves. Left alone, Craig shouts for help as he tries to escape his bind. Meanwhile, Kelly gazes outside the window of their home as her husband hasn't returned. Moments later, while Craig tries to sever the ropes with his teeth, he hears a police officer banging on the basement door. Hopeful, Craig responds, but the officer remains holding him at gunpoint despite seeing him restrained. As the musician describes his abductor, the officer demands he turn the blowtorch off. Craig realizes the officer believes he is the Gemini killer, so he introduces himself carefully. Regardless, the officer calls his detective colleague and recites the suspect's rights while pushing a gun at his temple. Before retreating upstairs to fetch his partner, the officer looks at Craig in distaste, condemning him for his heinous crimes. Shortly after, Kelly calls her husband's phone, but Craig fails to answer it because of his restraints, so she leaves him a message. When the musician hears someone enter the basement, he stops biting his ropes. The detective calls Craig as Billy, taunting him with his smoke. Seeing Kelly's missed calls on Craig's phone, the detective accuses the woman of conspiring with the incriminated man. Hearing this, Craig threatens him, but the detective immediately points his gun at him, exposing the Gemini tattoo on his arm. Starting his interrogation, the detective asks Craig where he was the night before, accusing him of dumping the Gemini killer's seventh victim, Allison, at the lake. Enraged, Craig lashes out and insists on being untied, so the detective strikes him. The officer refuses to heed his suspect's plea as he demands to know the location of the other six bodies. When Craig dreadfully claims he doesn't know, the detective smashes a tooth out of him. Meanwhile, Kelly drives to the liquor store and asks the cashier about her husband, but Lauren didn't find anything strange. Instead, Kelly asks for security footage outside the store, but the cashier claims there are only cameras inside. At some basement, Craig offers the detective money, but the relentless officer refuses. When the detective calls him Bill again, Craig suddenly realizes that the person in front of him is Bill, who has been addressing himself all night. Staying in character, the fake detective urges Craig to reveal where he supposedly hid the six bodies to lighten his sentence. With an idea in mind, the musician claims they're in a storage unit and convinces the deranged man to take him there. Refusing to cooperate, Bill strikes his victim again and asks for the unit's address. 
When Bill realizes Craig's lying, he fires his gun beside the musician's ear, deafening him temporarily. Unable to get what he wants, Bill exits the basement while the distressed man pleads to leave his wife alone. At the Owens residence, Kelly reports her husband's disappearance to the police via call, but the authorities inform her they'll begin a search after 24 hours. Frustrated, Kelly ends the call when she hears someone ring their door. Hours later, Bill jumps into the basement dressed as an inmate. Assuming he did something to his wife, Craig spits at him, so the deranged man confronts him aggressively. Continuing his theatrics, Bill pretends that Craig just arrived at their shared prison cell and runs him down to the jailhouse's rules. Taking advantage of Bill's delusion, Craig asks his co-inmate to untie him so he can bust them out of prison. Craig then asks his name, but the deranged man claims the musician knows his sister, Mary Beth. In a trip down memory lane, Bill remembers when he was seven. His mother's boyfriend defiled his sister and carved a cross on his arm. When he crossed paths with him years ago, Bill claims he was no longer alive, while his sister was found a month ago. To sympathize with Bill, Craig reveals that his wife was in an abusive foster home and is still traumatized after her painful experience. Triggered, Bill accuses Craig of lying and threatens him with his pliers, so the musician takes back his words. Nevertheless, the deranged criminal severs the musician's fingers, making him scream in pain. Then, Bill hears guards coming and rushes to leave the room. Meanwhile, Kelly invited her best friend Bianca over, unaware that she's in an affair with her missing husband. Bianca assures Craig is fine, but Kelly finds it strange that he hasn't called. In the basement, the agonizing musician finds Bill dressed up as a doctor, who still addresses him as Bill while checking his patient's profile on a blank paper. The phony doctor claims he must sew Craig's fingers back but reveals that the severed parts are already dead. As Bill takes the patient's wedding ring from the severed hand, Craig insists he sews them back since he's a guitarist. When Craig convinces the fraudulent doctor to bring him to the hospital, Bill reminisces about his frequent trips to the emergency room when he was 12. His mother was arrested for stealing painkillers, so he and his sister ended up separated in the foster home. While Bill finishes sewing Craig's open wound, he tries to cheer him up and gives him his calling card before leaving. Meanwhile, Kelly reveals to Bianca that Craig has been cheating on her, thinking her husband reunited with his secret lover. Caught off guard, Bianca refuses to believe her, feeling uneasy about her friend's accusation. Moments later, Bill, now a public attorney, descends into the basement and pulls a chair in front of his client. He delivers the bad news to Craig, saying that the governor won't impede his death sentence since it's the election year, so his death is scheduled for 6 a.m. Trying to win his case, the musician insists on an insanity plea, but Bill stutters, claiming no one believes he's insane. Though equally frustrated by the system, the attorney asks what his client's last meal would be. However, Craig opens up about his troubled adolescence until one teacher saw potential in him and taught him to be a guitarist. Amidst his band's quick rise to fame, everything suddenly changed, failing to produce songs like before as he lost his way as well. Craig sympathizes with the deranged criminal's existential dilemma, claiming he understands his pain and pleads with him to stop. With a forlorn look, Bill contemplates for a moment but immediately returns to his attorney persona, asking Craig if he wants a cheeseburger as his last meal. Abandoning hope, Craig asks for a 20-pound slow-roasted turkey, but Bill asks for something simple, so the detainee chooses to have pizza. Before the attorney leaves, he tells his client that the governor might change their mind at the last minute, putting Craig's hopes up. At his house, Kelly says she would run over her husband's lover, but Bianca insists that she should just leave Craig. When Kelly doesn't concede her savage plan, her friend fakes a smile. Much later, Craig sees Bill dressed as an old man. When Bill sits before him, he grabs a wired telephone from his pocket and talks to him as if he's in a visitation booth. While the musician plays along, he urges Bill's supposed father to help him get out, but the old man addresses the imaginary glass between them and the prison guards. Craig then blames him for his unfortunate upbringing and recounts Bill's memory of Mary Beth's assault. Triggered, Bill strikes Craig with a telephone and strangles the musician with a cord, tormenting him for not saving his sister. When the old man stops, Craig points out that he has broken through the imaginary glass, persuading to get him out. Unfortunately, Bill doesn't break character and leaves. While putting a substance into one drink, Kelly phones the hospital to check if her husband has been admitted, but none claims to have him. Meanwhile, Craig curiously eyes the deranged man as he's now dressed as a woman. 
Bill, acting like his mother, takes a young Bill's drawing from a purse as the musician plays along. Then Bill takes a smoke, so Craig asks to have some. After giving him a puff, Bill fervently recalls his mother's dreams for their family while the musician reassures him wholeheartedly. When the abductor pretending to be his mother claims to leave, he hugs Craig, the supposed son, for the last time despite the imaginary barrier. Taking advantage of Bill's vulnerability, the musician urges him to save him, so the mother persona secretly slides him a nail file before leaving. Left alone, Craig uses the nail file to sever the ropes before his abductor returns. Meanwhile, Kelly asks Bianca to call her husband through her phone, which she obliges. Suspiciously, Kelly asks why she has Craig's number, so Bianca claims they're all friends. In the basement, Craig stops filing when Bill returns as a prison guard, who puts duct tape over his mouth. Then, Bill sits to watch the detainee while waiting for his last meal, saying he was once a pizza delivery boy. Suddenly, the door rings, so the ruthless man retreats upstairs to get it. While paying the delivery boy, they hear Craig's muffled screams, so Bill claims he's role-playing with his wife. At the basement, Craig hides the nail file once more as Bill serves him a beer and pizza. After removing his duct tape, the deranged man feeds Craig and praises the doctor's work on his severed fingers. Half an hour before 6am, the guard gathers the food to prepare for the death penalty when Craig notices Bill's tattoo. He learns that it's the Gemini sign, which constitutes the twin. Meanwhile, Kelly asks Bianca where she was last Thursday night as they drink what she prepared. Confused, Bianca claims she was with Daniel, which Kelly doubts. At last, Craig cuts the rope and carefully releases his restrained limbs from the chair while Bill plays loud music upstairs. After covering his wounded hand, Craig grabs a pick from a shelf to protect himself before climbing the stairs. Through the dark hallway, Craig cautiously grabs for the door but Bill tases him from behind. The musician manages to stab his abductor, but the unhinged man stabs him back and punches him unconscious on the floor. Back in the basement, Craig wakes up to Bill sitting in front of him, dressed as Father Fitzgerald to grant the detainee a peaceful passing. Craig chooses to confess the Gemini killer's sins as his own. Still, the tactical musician includes Bill in his absolution, saying he can be forgiven for his sins if he also confesses. Emotionally, the deranged man continues acting like a priest, making Craig lose all hope. When Craig agrees to have communion, the fake priest gives him biscuits and water as the sacramental bread and wine. As the priest proclaims his salvation, Craig spits out the water and laughs at Bill. Patiently, the deranged man wipes his face and carves the Gemini symbol on Craig's forehead as he prays over him. Meanwhile, Bianca is passed out at Kelly's house after her friend drugged her earlier. As 6am nears, the Gemini killer dresses as an executioner and hands Craig the cross necklace of Bill's mother. Bawling, Craig asks to leave a message for his wife, so Bill places a recording phone on his desk, where he repeatedly tells Kelly that he loves her. When Bill watches the clock strike 6, he gets up and prepares the blowtorch, making Craig thrash in his seat. After taking the life of his eighth victim, Bill looks over the scene before him despondently. Much later, Kelly welcomes Bill dressed as a police officer knowingly into her home. The deranged man reports that he is done with her husband, so Kelly refers to Bianca and asks him to take the trash out. A month earlier, Bill and his twin sister Kelly reunited. The brother ate his twin sister's cookies in her kitchen, whom he had reconciled with after years of separation. After Kelly asked about his acting, she suddenly brought up the Gemini killer. Surprised, Bill denied being the infamous criminal, but his sister looked at him, fascinated by his crime. Then, Kelly asked her brother to kill her cheating husband. Burdened by their shared traumatic past, the twins embrace each other, affirming the musician's death later on. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.